it's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we are going to be unboxing something from Fuji. That's something new for me. And another thing that's new is, I haven't done an unboxing uh, video on the channel before. Um, not a real one, not a serious one. And so we are gonna dive right in and see what, uh, we're gonna find out what, what Fuji has in store from us. This is from B&H Photo. And another thing new is uh, I just got my second vaccination today. My wife and I were both fortunate enough to do that. We are both educators. And so that was uh, something new. So we're kind of excited about that and the new freedoms that we will be experiencing. Uh-oh, a little nervous. There it is. It's the XE4. This is going to be a short unboxing video. So why the XE4? One, um, I have been delighted with the Fuji X100B and I have been interested in the XE4 and I did a video comparing them and I claimed at the end of the video I would decide between the two. And basically in making that video, I decided that while the X100B, which is right here, it's beautiful, it's classic. Um, it's, it's probably the classic street photography camera. I preferred something that had a little more flexibility, uh, better eye autofocus or better autofocus, and something that would allow more video content. So here we are today. So this is the unboxing. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna give you my honest reactions. It's little but it was heavier than I thought for how little it was. So, oh, it's interesting. It's like they shrunk the X100V. Ah, it's beautiful. It's a little, well, I'm assuming there's no battery in there, so it's lighter because of that, and there's no lens on it. All right, so this is my honest reactions, and I didn't want to put any, um, you know, sort of edit on it. Um, I just wanted to show you how I really felt. Is that the lens? <laughs> so this is the tiny, tiny, tiny uh, lens. They call it a pancake lens. And I guess once you take off the, that's pretty small. It's, it's adorable. It feels like just a cap. Yeah, look how flat that is. Kind of like the Fun Leader uh, body cap lens or the cap lens I got from Fun Leader, which is F8 and has no focusing mechanism in it. All right, this is really interesting. Okay, this is, here's a battery, which is the same as the X100V battery. So while this is probably not charged, I will be able to pop in a charged one from my bag over there. And uh, there is, let's see, another cable here. This is, uh, Pretty straightforward. It's a cable, probably to charge it with. Oh. Who knew unboxings were so hard? My, and everyone's unboxing, I think they just sweep things to the side and knock it off their desk. It's a USB-C cable for uh, charging. And that's it. That's it, of course, I'm gonna keep this. Uh, I am going to tidy up my workstation here. Uh, Fujifilm strap. That's nice. Uh, free Capture One Express. Manual, uh-oh. What is encased in the manual? It is some sort of dongle. I wonder if it's for like a headphone adapter. The X100V has this funky thing where you have to use an adapter. You can't plug headphones straight in. It looks like that's what it is. There it is, USB on one side, 3.5 on the other. Nice. So it's these three things, battery, cord, and adapter, and it is also this tiny, tiny pancake lens. All right, that's it. Let's plug it in, fire it up, take a look at the menu, and see how we feel. All right, so I am going to, so similar battery compartment, we're gonna, oh, it goes back and forth. 
instead of side to side with a, a instead of side to side with a round catch, it goes back and forth. I'm not sure if that's better. Uh, there's an SD card slot in there, which that reminds me I don't have an SD card. Uh oh. Oh. So if you push it shut, it doesn't stay shut. So you have to push, push and slide the lock over, which seems a little more fussy. The, I think the X1 or V latch was a little cleaner. Like you have to push and release. I never had the X1 or V pop open accidentally. So it's weird they change that. This also looks smaller. I think that is one of the gripes I heard on the reviews is the eye viewfinder is smaller. All right, so batteries in there. Let's pop on the lens, shall we? There's the lens. Release the, the body cap right here. And then we take a look at the sensor for a second. Looks good, looks real. I think it's the 26.1 uh, TransX APS-C sensor. And let's make this a match made in heaven. Is that what it is? Is this a match made in heaven? It's tiny, it's so light. It feels, it's so light, it just feels like a trick almost. You can honestly palm this. You know, it's interesting, earlier I was trying to take a picture, hold the X1 RV down, take like a flat lay. I was trying to hold it with two fingers and tap the screen to trigger it. And I couldn't do it because it was just too wide and too bulky. <laughs> Problem solved, XE4. All right, so let's fire it up. Oh, it's gonna ask me English or what language do you want? Yes, let's do English. So push, pair with smartphone. Oh, here's the, here's the great thing about Fuji's. If you've never set up a Fuji recently, you can just transfer the time and the date uh, with your smartphone. So I'm going to do that. Went to this little bag of backup cards, push back to release the lever, click in the card. Now I'm just going to format. I haven't used this card in many, many moons. So I'm going to go menu. Oh, it's kind of touchy menu over to the wrench menu, slide it over to save data setup and over to is that where it is? Where is, where is format user setting format? There it is. Erase all data. Okay. It's formatting the card and very soon we will take the very first picture. The God this is so small. Both my fingers are underneath it. Uh, lens cap off and, uh, Autofocus seems pretty quick. ISO's at 4,000. Oh, how do you change the ISO? Okay, rolling shutter speed. I'm not getting a preview, so that means the preview's off. So I have to, <laughs> how do you change the ISO? Oh, there's no other, <laughs> I don't know where the dials are. Oh my God, I accidentally took a picture of the light stand in the corner as my first picture. All right, I'm gonna turn, there's a clicky aperture ring. So I'm gonna put that on 2.8. First picture is of, ooh, I don't know if I like that shutter sound. Wonder if I can change that. I gotta get this ISO off of 12,000, somebody help me. Ye God. Where is the ISO? So I use the command dials on the X100V. This command dial is tiny. I don't know if you can see that. It's absolutely tiny. It's tiny. It's tiny. This command dial is tiny. This command dial is tiny. And there is no rear command dial, which is one of my favorite things. Honestly, it's sometimes hard to, to move it. Ooh, and the, the screen seems laggy. They do not teach you this in film school. The screen seems laggy and this dial seems tiny. That's weird. Maybe it's because the ISO is so high. Oh, I'm on movie mode. <laughs> okay, hit still image. Well, what's funny is I'm on still image mode, but it gives me my frame rate up here. So I don't know why that is because I'm in... It, 
I'm in. Okay. Oh, look, I'm in movie mode and everything's quick, responsive. There is no lag on the viewfinder. That's good. Now I'm recording, but I'm recording at 59.4. I have to change that menu. Okay, this should be easy. I'm pretty comfortable with the menu options. So I'm gonna go up to 4K, 16.9 and over to 23.98. Highest bit rate available is 200, that's fine. MP4, H.264 is my only option or MOV files. That is at 4208, uh, 422-10-bit via HDMI. So it's a 4208-bit. I just don't remember that, but I guess that's what it is. All right, 4208-bit. But I did a, a video with the X100V uh, at Venice, and it was... 1080p, 120 frames per second and 60 frames per second. It looked great, honestly, and it was 8-bit, and so I don't know if I could tell the difference. Image quality, I'm gonna go film simulation. I'm gonna go to Provia, Astia, Eterna. Oh, they kind of brighten up. It's interesting they have these uh, flashy colors on the menu, that orange, red gradient makes it flashy. It seems like it's, hey, for a beginner. <laughs> I think that's the reputation of this camera, it's more, beginner friendly maybe or is that the xs10 anyway i gotta stop talking i took some photos the only thing i can't figure out is if i'm in stills mode how do i change the iso iso is automatic is is it it looks like it says iso is automatic so where's my iso setting where is my iso setting Huh. Totally, totally stumped. Out of the box. Oh, here's a quick menu. Quick menu is on top. Isn't this fun that you get to discover it just the same time I'm discovering it? There's a queue right there for quick menu on top. I prefer, honestly, the corner uh, for the X100V. It's probably a matter of preference. Okay, I go to ISO, and now I would normally roll the command dial here, so I'm gonna assume I'm gonna roll the exposure compensation. No, I'm not. Toggle it, nope. If you toggle it, it goes past. There's no D-pad. I'm gonna press it, that just escapes. I'm gonna hit the Q menu on top again. So how do I... Oh, it's the front command dial, obviously, obviously. Uh, so I took it off auto and now it's on 10,000. Okay, so I'm gonna set up a function button really quick so I can change the, the ISO down to the wrench and I go to screen setup, button dial setup, command dial, there's only one. And I, I can do shutter speed or aperture. What? That's all I have available? Or I can do ISO, okay. I don't know, it shows. Got it, got it. Front front command dial, you press it to change ISO. I'm gonna bring that down to, let's just do 400, that's good. Crispy, a little playback on that. There's a picture of the X100V uh, that is now filming me. See yourself, see yourself, okay. <laughs> All right, anyways, I think that's enough. Uh, there's quite a few surprises. Uh, right off the bat, it's maybe, oh, there's a little dial here to adjust. You probably can't see that, but just probably to adjust what's in focus when you're looking through the viewfinder. Yep, that's it. I don't know what the name of that is. Super helpful. All right, yeah, this is gonna get uh, take getting used to because the rear command dial used to push to magnify. I don't know how to do that. It's gonna be a learning curve, but I'm gonna give it a shot. The cool thing is I can pop this off and put on the Viltrox 56 to 85. The 56, which is an 85 equivalent, um, I can put on the, uh, the F2 23 mil, which is a, a lens I love. It's probably my favorite for the Fuji. I can put on the 10 to 24. So this has all sorts of flexibility. Oh, hold on. Flippy screen, exactly what the X100V does, but they say 
it's also <laughs> what How? is that is that good enough to fit oh sure enough sure enough if you flip it up like this it's not quite extended but if you flip it out and up you see that you see those out and up so it will kick stand in the back for the screen. So now I can see myself. It obviously does not have a face tracking on. So um, let's put it in movie mode. And I will then, it's in movie mode. So let's hit menu. Let's find a focus mode, auto focus. We'll say area and then we'll go auto focus area. Nope, let's go menu back focus mode. Oh, here's where they buried this. This got uh, some dings on the reviews. Changing from manual to auto is buried in the menu. So I guess you could set a custom button for it because it's just a software touch. So it's probably assignable to a custom button. I'm just going to say single, but I'm looking to turn on face eye detection. Eye auto. There it is. So now if I open this right here and open it all the way up, that's so interesting. That's a bit of engineering right there. Now when I put it out here, touch the face, yes, yes, it does. It does have eye autofocus. This is crazy. Is it as responsive as the Fuji? I would say they're, they look about the same. Let me just do a little bit of recording. Uh, I guess I'm on, am I on, was I recording the whole time? That's awesome. Okay, I'm recording now. Okay, I turned it off again. Here we go, recording. All right, now it doesn't have stabilization, so this one's on the tripod, this one's handheld, so you can see all the jitters and stuff, but I don't know, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. My ISO's lower here, it's F2, F2.8. 50 frames per second, 60. This is a, what is this, a 27 mil? So it's more like a 50 mil, I think. Interesting, okay, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun, kids. All right, peace out. Uh-oh, can't find the eye. Peace out. Hey, kids, peace out. <laughs> Anyways, fun new toy. And uh, the message I just wanna share with you is it's, it's fun to do an unboxing. I think they're big on YouTube but because people like to see something new. Uh, there are people who are into capitalism and consumerism. And I definitely know um, as somebody, a YouTuber, um, there's a lot of pressure to get views. And what gets views is things that are new that people are considering spending their money on. Um, so if this video is helpful to you, um, I appreciate a like. If you want to uh, subscribe, I appreciate that. Um, and this is my first unboxing. So I hope you got a sense of childlike joy and wonder like a kid on Christmas, because that's definitely what this camera feels like. Now I will compare this side by side with X1RV for sure in an upcoming video. But for right now, uh, we will call it a day. Thanks. See you in the next one. Peace.